and the devil would also bring you to results it was the devil that told jesus he says bow down and worship and i will give you the world he will give you but the end thereof is death the end thereof is the way of death so don't judge your relationship with god by your material possession god was speaking to the churches the seven churches in the book of revelations and to one church he told them you are rich you say you are rich you are full of possessions you have all it takes you have gold you have silver but in my eyes you are poor you are wretched you are poor you are wretched so in the eyes of god the first thing he's looking at is not your worldly possession the first thing he's looking at is not your your worldly good it's not how you are able to maneuver life and get the results it's not how you are able to train your children in school it's not how you are able to become the uh, uh, to reach the apex of your career he's looking at the prosperity of your soul he's looking at the prosperity of your spirit and he's saying if you don't have prosperity he says what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul so God understands that it's possible to gain the whole world outside of him. So don't be deceived. It's possible to gain the whole world outside God. But he's telling us that the end is destruction. So the first place that God wants us to wants to bring us to this morning is the place of mercy for sin the place of mercy how far have you gone from god you know that's the question that should be ringing in your hearts how far have i gone from god how far say just as i am without one plea but now thy blood was shed for me it means that the mercy of god is always present but that the mercy of god is available does not mean that it will work for you we read lamentation chapter 3 and the prophet jeremiah began to you know from verse one he was lamenting he was lamenting and he says these things are happening to us but i remember the mercies of god he said for his mercies are new every morning it means that god knows knows that we need a dose of his mercy every day to be able to obtain his results so he makes his mercy available each morning but that his mercy is available does not mean that it will work for you the Bible will say you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It means that the truth will not make you free. It's not every truth that will make you free. It's the truth that you know. It's the mercy that you have obtained that will speak for you. So that the mercy of God is available does not mean that it's, it's just there and it will keep speaking for you. No, there is a way to get to that mercy. And the first way is to realize your wretchedness. Is to, real, to, to, to come to the point of realization of the, how far you have strayed. It was the prodigal son. He said he came to, to his senses and said, I will now return to my father. For every person here, we must come to that point where we begin to see the things we are doing. Where we begin to see the ways that we have heard from God. The ways that we have deviated from God. The times that we have gone against His way to get that money. The times we have gone against His way to satisfy the lust of the flesh. The times that, that we have slept with that woman, with that man that is not our spouse. And say, Lord, have mercy. We must come to that point of realization if not the mercy of god cannot reach us because for some of us we think that we can play god so you hear people say something like the mercy is always there so let me do this and then i will ask for mercy but let me shock you this morning it's not your asking for mercy that brings mercy it's not your voice that brings mercy it's your heart it's not your tears because some of us we have mastered the arts of tears so we think we can we can give god emotional blackmail and then he would have mercy but when it comes to spirits it is the 
heart that is weighed. So when you are there shedding those tears, the angels are with their balance and they are weighing your heart. Is this heart heavy enough to obtain mercy? He said, it is the broken and the contrite heart. The broken and the contrite heart. The broken and the contrite heart. It's not the world. It's not the tears. So, you may think you are playing God, but actually you are playing yourself. Because at the end of the day, you will find out that God cannot be mocked. And I pray it's not too late. When you come to that point of realization, I pray it's not in eternity where you are faced with God and your works are revealed to you because there is no mercy in eternity. Mercy is only on this side of the divide. Mercy is only on this side of the divide. So while mercy is still available and active, can your heart just return to that mercy? Can your heart just return to that mercy? Can your heart just return to that mercy? just as I am without one plane. So can your heart return? Because God is always beckoning. Like the father of the prodigal son, the father was always waiting for the son to come to the point of realization. Because when the son was still afar, the father has already sighted him and was coming. So the father is always waiting. Is always looking at, oh, when will this my son return? When will this my daughter return? When will she come back? When will we come back? Oh, that he may come, that he may come, that she may come. And he's waiting, he's watching. And once he sights the broken and the contrite heart, he will come. He will come. He would come. So, where have you deviated? Where have you deviated? Because the devil is a bad devil. Sometimes it's at the point of our breakthrough. He comes to us and he brings that thing that we call weakness. And then we fall into that weakness. And then he, by that, we cut off that breakthrough. And then he allows us. And then we struggle, 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 struggle. At the verge of another breakthrough, he comes. Comes with bitterness. Comes with offenses. Comes with sexual lust. Comes with addiction. And then he keeps playing us such that we can get to the point that we start asking ourselves, God, what is this? We will now start blaming God, not knowing that we are the initiators of our plight, not knowing that we are the ones, that we are the authors of our destiny. So where are you? Like God would come to Adam in that garden and say, where are you? He was not looking for Adam physically. He was looking for him in the spirit. Where are you? Where? Where have you gone off to? Where have you gone off to? Where have you run off to? It's time to return to God. And before we continue, I just want you to, to return. In your own way, return. <laughs> yeah, nah. The devil came to Jesus. And after everything, Jesus was able to say, The prince of this world cometh to me, but he has nothing in me. Do you have a possession that belongs to the devil? Do you have something in you that the devil can lay hold of and say, this one is mine? Is it how you sleep around? Is it how you sort your courses? Is it how you, you make money in the ways that are not God's ways? Can he lay hold on something in your life? I mean the devil and say, this one belongs to me. Because the devil is the accuser of, of brethren. He will continually appear in the courts of heaven. When your matter is being decided, when that blessing wants to be unleashed, he will come and say, unleashed for who? For this one? For that one? No. There is something in him that belongs to me. And, the devil, and, the, and God will be handicapped. So it's unless we come to that point of realization that God can be able to help us. Help us. Help us. So just shut your eyes and begin to talk to God. This is that moment where you, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing with God. It's not, it's a broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart. He's searching for, he's searching for. He said, my eyes go to and fro. Searching, searching for those whose hearts are perfect. God is looking for some people. He's looking for some people that he can invest himself on. 
Are you coming this morning? Are you coming this morning? Oh, please. I have realized the wretchedness of my soul. Previously, I, I, I thought I was in prosperity. I thought the activities I perform in church are enough to suffice. But now I realize that activities cannot blackmail God. Emotions cannot blackmail God. It is my heart that God seeks. And I come today. And I come today. That thing you are struggling with, you call it a weakness. And you lay it before God. Unless you are saying that the, that, that weakness is more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Why would you give power to a weakness? A weakness. You have exalted it so much that is now above the power of God in your life. In the name of Jesus.